people reaffirm their identity this way. They wake up in the morning and they say, let me think about my problems. And those problems are memories of past experiences that are etched in their brain. So they think about the person, the place, the, the object, the experience. And we could say then, if they believe that their thoughts have something to do with their destiny, they're thinking in the past. And every one of those problems has an emotion associated. So now they feel unhappy. Now they feel fear. Now they feel unworthy. It's a conditioning process because yeah. conditioning, all you need is an image. They've mastered this on television. <laughs> an image or a brand and an emotion. And all you need is a stimulus and a response. So every time the person remembers their future, their past, as they remember their past, the image with the emotion is literally subconsciously conditioning their brain and body into the past. And so if they're living in the familiar past, guess what? They're going to predict the, the, the next future. They're going to want to be able to predict their future so because that's the known. So that there's only one place where the unknown exists, and that's the present moment. And teaching people how to get into the generous present moment takes an act of awareness. And most people would rather turn on their TV yeah, yeah, we should, we should get up as if our prayers are already answered. The problem is, is that our senses fool us into separation. The person says, I want to be healed, I want to be healthy, I want to be wealthy. And they imagine it and they come back and it's not there. And be, when they see it, it's not there. The thought of their future creates the emotion of lack or separation. And if thoughts are the language of the brain and feelings are the language of the body, now you have mind and body in oppos opposition. So then, if you think about something like appreciation or thankfulness or gratitude, gratitude, when you are receiving something, when you just receive something, when, when something is happening to you in the moment or something just happened to you that you enjoy or you're, ex you're surprised about or, you're, or it's pleasing to you, you feel this emotion of gratitude. So gratitude becomes the, uh, the signature, the emotional signature that it's already happened. Mm. Gratitude is the ultimate state of receiving. So now when the person combines a clear intention of their future and they open their heart and they feel the emotion of that future, their body is objective. It's the unconscious mind. It doesn't know the difference between the actual experience in their life that's creating the emotion and the emotion that they're fabricating by thought alone. In that moment, their body is believing it's in that future, in the present moment. And the stronger the emotion they feel, the more altered they feel inside of them, the more they pay attention to the picture in their mind. And we could say then that they're beginning to remember their future. And biologically, it's the same as remembering your past. So then let's offer another alternative. Well, when you begin to create from the field instead of from matter, the only way you can do that is you have to learn how to take all of your attention off your body and become a nobody. Take all of your attention off all the people in your life that you give so much of your attention and energy to because you have an emotion associated with them. And get beyond all the people in your life and go from a someone to a no one. Mm -hmm. Now, if you've worked your whole life being a someone, or if you've been working your whole life thinking that you're your body, you're gonna have to work a little harder because that's your identity, sure. that's what you're associated with. And if this was easy, Everybody would be doing it. So then you have to go get beyond all the things in your life, your cell phone, your computer, your car, and literally go from something to nothing. You have to take all your attention off the place you work, the place you live, the place you need to be, the place you're sitting, and go from somewhere to nowhere. you got to stop thinking about the predictable future and the familiar past and go right into the present moment and go from some time to no time. And if you do that properly, you become pure consciousness. And that's how you enter the field. So we, we have the evidence to know that it could happen because we've measured it. But the real evidence is watching the testimonial of someone who says, I had stage four cancer. I was told as a 41-year-old woman that I wouldn't live for more than two months. And I have no evidence of cancer in my body at all. Or someone that's a physician who has Parkinson's disease that's tried everything from the medical route and has one transcendental moment and their tremors and their pain are gone. And now they're chewing food, they're swallowing, uh, they're blowing their nose, they're standing up on their own. Uh, that's energy affecting matter. So we have hundreds and hundreds of testimonials of people that not only healed their body, but created 
pretty profoundly magical things in their life. So you have evidence in the scientific world, you have evidence in the practical world, and evidence is the loudest voice right now. And, and the accelerator of that whole process is witnessing it, because I'll stand on the stage. I did this just in our last week-long event in Cancun, and I watched a man stand on the stage and tell his testimony of his healing. I looked out in the audience. There wasn't a person in the audience that was thinking about anything else. They were, they, were, they were witnessing truth right before their eyes, a miracle. Now, you see that, and you look at the person, it doesn't look like a movie star, doesn't look like a vegetarian, doesn't look like they're buffed, doesn't look like uh, they're, 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 they're different than anybody else. They just look like an average person. And the most common thought that happens when you witness that is, if that person can do it, so could I. And that drops the belief right away. You, you cannot go back mm. to being the same person after you witness that. It's, it's impossible. You're witnessing that type of transformation. And stroke patients that have had a paralyzed limb for years or been blinded by a stroke that have perfect vision again. And the scans from their physician shows a complete 100% recovery. Now, strokes don't heal if they don't heal in two weeks according to the conventional model of medicine. And nerves don't really come back online if they've been damaged uh, uh, after a period of time. And yet we're witnessing those kind of supernatural changes. Well, I, I'm actually more interested in, in deepening that understanding, which means, do we need a sugar pill, saline injection, or some false surgery or procedure to change our state of being? I mean, do you need some external influence? Because the sugar pill, is a symbol. It's a symbol of possibility, and the person has been conditioned that pills <laughs> heal people. So they put their a power into it, and the moment the physician says, this is a new drug, and the physician is enthusiastic or excited about it, that enthusiasm becomes contagious, and the person all of a sudden sees the possibility in their mind. They actually see a future that they actually could be healthy or better. That's a clear intention. And when they feel optimistic, when they feel inspired, when they feel grateful, when they're changing their emotions or energy, they're combining a clear intention with an elevated emotion. And if thoughts of the vocabulary of the brain and feelings of the vocabulary of the body and how you think and how you feel creates your state of being, they just move from their past present state of being into a future present state of being. They began to change their brain and body by thought alone. Now, imagine what happens when oxytocin is released in the quantities that we see. Oxytocin signals nitric oxide. Nitric oxide sig signals a chemical called endothelial derived relaxing factor. And that's a big word or set of words that just means a chemical that signals the arteries in your heart to literally expand. And when they expand, you're getting more blood flow in there. And just like when your sexual organs are around, aroused and there's blood flow in there, now with the same intensity, you're going to feel it right in your heart, and it's going to be way bigger. And now the person's heart is wide open. Now, so here's the question. <laughs> the person feels those emotions. Do you think they're going to want to judge somebody else in that moment? You, you think they're going to want to hold a grudge? <laughs> they're not going to try to forgive. They're going to feel so amazing. They're not going to want to lose this feeling and they're just going to say I forgive you I, I'm not going to I'm not going to give this feeling up because right. of you now the side effect of true transformation the side effect is a greater level of consciousness the side effect is a greater skill set in life and, and I think that when you start getting good at this then all the things you thought you wanted you no longer want because when you're creating more brain and heart coherence you feel more whole. And the more whole you feel, the less you live in lack. So how could you want many things if you feel whole? It feels like you already have them. And, and that's actually when you start to see those wonderful miracles, those synchronicities, those serendipities, those coincidences happening in a person. Those are experiences coming to them. That's the field dropping bread, breadcrumbs saying, keep going, keep going. And there's a synchronization between that person's energy and their future. And the side effect of that are signs. Uh, and, and that's when it gets to be exciting because every sign does what? 
It creates an enthusiasm and excitement. You're kind of going, hey, there's another sign. I'm going to go do it again. So you, now you're not going, oh, I have to meditate today. Oh, jeez, i got to create my life. You're like, oh, my God, I don't want the magic to stop happening. I'm going to get into it. And every synchronicity creates that elevated emotion, and you use that energy for the next creation, and people climb out of their lives, climb, climb out of their pasts.